that the purpose of this model is really to start to familiarize yourself with the different aspects of um, energy use in buildings. It's not meant to be the most accurate model, although I'd like to see you try to get it as accurate as possible. The real um, point of this is for you to start to dig in deep into the different components of energy use and start to recognize some of the limitations and assumptions that you're bringing to the, um, the table. What we're looking for is the item that generates energy, or that uses energy, uh, the power that it uses, and the amount of time that it uses. And ultimately what we're going to do is multiply power times time to get energy. And then we're going to deal with that energy in a few different ways. So let's start with uh, these tabs here. Um, we're going to look at cooling, heating, ventilation, lighting, equipment, process loads, and hot water heating. And in your documentation, you'll have more or less uh, some values for each of these. Now, I completely understand if you don't have, say, the uh, power consumption of your um, cooling system. It's a hard number to find, and it can be unreliable. Uh, that said, if you have a number, please go ahead and put it in there, give us the, the power that it uses, and then estimate the um, a number of hours per day and the days per year that you're using it. If you don't have the power numbers for your heating, cooling, ventilation systems, then I've got a rule of thumb method you can use to estimate them. If you go over to this HVAC tab, you'll see some instructions about how to go through with this. And keep in mind that these are just rules of thumb. The, you can see that there's a lot of things that they don't consider. They don't consider the climate, they don't consider the amount of insulation, they don't consider any shade, how many windows you have, what kind of windows. It's all kinds of uh, simplifications in this rule of thumb, as there are in almost any rule of thumb. But uh, this will give you some number, at least, to uh, think about relative to the benchmark numbers and your utility bills. And then it'll also give you a way of comparing later simulations that you do in the semester that will look in more depth at heating and cooling systems with a lot more inputs. So uh, for now, these uh, rules of thumb are approximate and they give you a, a sense of the power draw at peak demand and then I've also added some average power use as well. Um, these images on the left, you can see the cooling, heating, and ventilation, are meant to give you a sense of what um, the, the sort of order of magnitude of uh, these systems are. And they can be, the, the logic here can be applied to much larger buildings, um, much larger systems. But at least, I, I hope at least, this gives you um, some basis in your own experience for understanding what a watt of cooling represents. So, for instance, here, this is a, a standard residential window unit uh, air conditioner, and that would be sufficient to cool about a 15 square meter room. And that uses about, or that supplies about a thousand watts of cooling. So for instance, right here, if I input 15 square meters, then that's going to uh, show that 1,000 watts of cooling is required. And then if you read down here vertically, there's a whole bunch of different inputs. And you can choose to use these uh, to, to change them, or you can accept the defaults if you don't know quite yet what you're doing, uh, which is totally understandable. We'll get to all this later in the semester. Uh, but the system efficiency represents how efficient that particular unit is at delivering uh, cool air, in this case, uh, uh, getting rid of the heat. Uh, then uh, duct losses, which in this case, actually, there would be no duct losses. So there'd be 100% um, efficiency there. Notice that these numbers, then um, the, the power use went down as a result. If I go back to 80 then um, it goes up. 80% uh, duct losses, or sorry, 20% duct losses are uh, typical. Um, 
And then envelope loss losses. This is how leaky your your building envelope is, and 70% would be a, a typical uh, rule of thumb m number. So what that does is when you multiply all these together, um, thousand watts times 350% times 80% times 70%, or sorry, thousand watts divided by these percentages, you get the uh, peak power use. And that would be the power use when the compressor is on and when the fan is on. Um, and all HVAC systems cycle. That means that they turn on for a peak amount of time for some time, and then they uh, come down in power use for other parts of the time. So to get the average, in this case, I'm assuming that the compressor is on for half of the time that the unit is on. You can, uh, based on your knowledge of your own system, you can, of course, choose to just input the number of hours that it's at peak power or the number of uh, hours that you think it's at average power. So you're going to take one of these powers uh, uses or numbers and go back to the energy model template. And here under cooling power, type in what you think it is. I think that was right. Uh, 510 is what it should be and then describe what it is. So we'll say bedroom window unit. And I'll say this is on most night times for about six hours and it's on for say two months a year which would be 60 days or so. And that gives me a total energy use of 183,000 watt hours or if you look over here 184 kilowatt hours per year. So um, if you then want to add more, uh, say you have more um, units, say I have another bedroom and the other bedroom is now 18 square meters. I can move that to 18 um, and we'll assume that this is, sorry, 300 and, 306. What do I do here? I've used the peak power instead of the average power. Sorry, I'll correct that right now. So if I go back to 15, that should have said 255. Sorry for the confusion there. That's if I'm using average. And then I'll say this is the master bedroom window, window unit. And this is also on for six hours uh, for 60 days a year. Notice in this case that the total didn't sum right here. And that's because when we added this row, um, it, we didn't copy this one. So an easy way to, to copy this is to take this lower right-hand corner, drag it down, and then make sure that this um, automated the correct cells by clicking up here and then seeing. So yes, it's, it's 306 times 6 times 60. It gives you this total. And then also make sure that this is summing the appropriate cells, which it is. Um, so that's a total of 201,900 watt hours per year. Um, and then if you look horizontally here, you can see that this gives you kilowatt hours per square meter per year, the um, energy cost in US dollars per square meter, and then the amount of photovoltaic you would need uh, relative to your uh, room area to cover all that energy, which in this case is not a lot. So that's kind of an overview of um, how to um, deal with the cooling. And the, the heating and ventilation is really very similar. So if we go back over to heating now, um, this already has the uh, square, square footage, square meterage, uh, the area of the zone. And keep in mind, right now, these are all linked to the first one. So if I change the this one, uh, this will also change, as will the ventilation. Uh, but it's entirely possible you'll have some areas of a building that are cooled and other areas that are heated and still others that are just ventilated. So if you want to just override that, you can type in anything you want here and you'll get, um, it'll, it'll um, break that uh, dependency. So say for a second I did have 50 square meters of heating in the building. Uh, this is um, right now what, what we're using as a comparison is just a space heater. 
And these space heaters are usually about 1,500 watts, and they can heat a small room, essentially, about 15 square meters or so. So if I had a space that was 50 square meters, I'd need about three of these uh, heaters to, uh, to do it. Did I do that math right? Yeah. About three of those heaters to, to do it. And in addition, um, if it's a, a central heater, like a furnace, that's then um, transmitting heat with, through ducts, then I'm going to have duct losses. And um, um, in addition, I've got the, the system efficiency itself. The system efficiency uh, for heating is pretty interesting because it depends quite uh, widely on the type of heater or type of fuel that it's using. Um, uh, furnaces that burn gas or oil or basically rely on combustion are somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 to 90 percent efficient. Um, electricity, electrical resistance heating, is about 100 percent efficient. And heat pump heating, which is, an, uh, well, I'm not going to explain what it is right now. We'll go into it later in the semester. Uh, but that's about 250% efficient. So there's a very wide range here, and the results will change uh, by a large margin depending on that. Use your best guess right now. If you have questions, feel free to ask me in class, and um, we can work it out. Uh, again, um, I've included both the peak power use and an average power use. And in this case, the average power use is just half of that. Uh, again, like the air conditioner, it primarily depends on how often you're just blowing air as opposed to heating that air actively. So um, I'm going to, just for the sake of an example, I'm going to use the peak power this time. I'm going to go back to my energy model template. I'm going to use that 11,161 uh, as the peak power. And let's say this is in the bedroom space heater. And say I use this um, overnight. So it's on for 12 hours. But it's actually only at peak power for, I can es estimate, three hours of that. So I'm going to estimate three hours. And then the um, heating time happens, say, for four months would be 4 times 30 is 120 days of the year. And then I get the amount of energy that it's using there. Um, so, and uh, again, same as I said for the cooling, this all automatically fills in. The one thing you do have to be careful of, which I pointed out earlier, is that this cost is tied right now in my spreadsheet to fuel costs. So I can show you it's... Um, linked to fuel cost. If you're using electricity, you're going to want to move that up to there. Okay, and lastly, ventilation. Uh, ventilation is this one here, and I should point out that this ventilation um, rule of thumb is just based on a um, the amount of ventilation that you need for fresh air. It's not um, hardcore exhaust ventilation. It's not going to clean out a lot of the hot air and replace it with cooler air. It's, it's kind of a background fan that's on most of the time in order to, um, in order to provide enough uh, fresh air. And this is very common for um, all kinds of buildings, both commercial as well as residential, to have this. Um, and again, if you don't have ducts, then this would be 100% efficient. For the ducts. So if I've got uh, three watts as my power for my ventilation, I can say it's running 24 hours a day for 365 days, and you know it's still not very much energy in the greater scheme of things. Um, I'm just going to say um, exhaust ventilation. So that's about it for HVAC systems. In the next video, we'll look at lighting and equipment energy use.